Hello. So today I'm excited to finally get to talk to all of you about the Android operating system, the Android open source project, our new support for the RISC-V architecture, and talk a little bit about some of our roadmap that we're expecting over the next few years. So first, a little bit of terminology. So Android is the open source operating system itself, and the Android open source project, or AOSP, is everything that you need to bring the Android operating system to your device. And Android has a really huge ecosystem, over three billion users, growing by double digit percentages year over year, and that's just the devices that use all of the Google suite of applications and services. But the most interesting thing about the ecosystem is that it isn't just a handful of devices from one or two manufacturers. We have more than 24,000 distinct devices from over 1,300 different vendors, and that grows year over year as well. And really, it's that diversity, that coverage of many use cases, um, while still maintaining compatibility, that has brought and grown our application ecosystem. There are more than a million applications just in the Google Play Store. And there are many more if you start to look at all of the other app stores or sideloaded or, or discrete devices. Um, there's no requirement to have any of the Google applications when you use the Android Open Source Project. It's freely available for anyone to take and use with their devices. And what's the, what that's meant is that an operating system that was originally designed to run on cameras, uh, but is most widely known for running on phones, has grown to a number of different form factors. So we've got it on, on wearables, we've got it on tablets now, you're seeing it in car infotainment systems. We've also got streaming support to broadcast the screen from your Android device to other, other surfaces. And as well, there's also support for IoT devices in order to control your smart home. Um, and it's really grown up over time and has become the most widely used Linux-based operating system in the world. And really, that's not just due to a bunch of work from Google folks in Mountain View in London. That's due to the diversity of the ecosystem, bringing everyone together in a large open source, um, in, in the large open source project to bring all of their innovations, new form factors, new devices, new regions, new users, new emerging markets and try to land all of those changes back into the project where they can be picked up by other manufacturers, other vendors to build more devices for their use cases. And so when you look at the Android open source project, like I mentioned, it has everything that you need to port the Android operating system to your platform. Not just the Linux kernel, but also all of the security layers, all of the security privileges, the trusted execution environment, all of the cross compilers um, so that you can do all of your work on the Linux host, but target whatever particular device that you have. There's a core operating system framework that provides the set of APIs that developers will build against, but there's also a set of libraries that allow developers to target a wide range of applications so that one developer can target the newest version of Android but still have their application run across a lot of different devices, including much older ones. There are also reference applications because who ships a tablet without a calculator app? Um, so from that, you can build a whole bunch of emulators. You can get your developers up and trying out your, your version and your revision of, of the open source project right away. You can also test to make sure that you have that compatibility because again, one of the big promises of Android is that developers can target one set of APIs and, land, and run that code on any device that shares that same architecture. We also have some reference boards and you can customize it for a, a handful of phones. Now the things that aren't in the Android open source project are some of the firmware and drivers. It's the open source project. Most people don't make their firmware and drivers readily available. Um, we also don't have any of the Google applications available as open source. And there's some work that happens in internal branches when we're modifying the user interface or we're adding new security interfaces. Those tend to evolve over the course of the year and then they get released in our, our yearly releases of Android and made available to the entire ecosystem. And Really, the thing that I want to emphasize here is that the, the Android Open Source Project is the thing that sort of defines the base compatible platform that enables our developers to work from one set of sources and APIs, but allows silicon partners to take that up, 
customize it, build their own board support packages, which they can then release as either a development board or a hobbyist board or a product of their own. They can also sell it on to device manufacturers who will package that solution up. They might add their own first party app stores or their own first party applications. And then they can either go and get a Google licensed or deliver that device directly. And all of these devices that have flowed through that have maintained compatibility will be able to be targeted by developers without having to pick up a separate SDK or rebuild their application. And so speaking of not rebuilding, of, of rebuilding your applications and architecture support, I wanted to talk a little bit about where we're at with RISC-V. Now one caveat before I jump in, um, many of my colleagues have really cool new products to announce. I do not have any Google products to announce. This is all about your products. This is about the open source project and the capabilities that we're hopefully making available to all of you with the amazing boards that I've been hearing, the, all of the new hardware that I've been hearing about this week. So earlier, just well at the end of September here, we started landed, landing patches. Now we've been following RISC-V for a very long time on the Android side, watching its progress very eagerly. Uh, we believe that more architectures and a more diverse ecosystem is better for everyone. Um, but adding support for a new architecture is much easier than removing it. Um, as the one who owns the team that's removing a lot of older features that were deprecated many years ago, we're very careful to make sure that everything is ready. And we think that RISC-V is ready to be supported as one of the architectures within the Android open source platform. So we're doing daily builds against the tip of tree. You can see we keep, we keep um, RISC-V green with up-to-date compilers every single day. Um, we are only supporting 64-bit only builds right now. Um, where we're at with Android, the increase in address space uh, in order to address more memory, as well as some of the security features that require 64-bit pointers are really critical to the ecosystem. We're also starting to see devices with longer lifespans, and it would be good if those didn't wrap over in a 32-bit integer in 2038. So what you can do right now from a Linux box is go ahead and enlist right, right, right up against the tip of the tree and build locally. Um, we're expecting to have full high fidelity emulator support very, very early at the start of next year. I was hoping to have a demo today, but didn't quite come together. Um, and we'll have Android runtime support for all of the Java workloads uh, during Q1. So starting with the interpreter and building up through our just-in-time compiler. But I really wanted to give a big thank you to everyone here, and not just the folks who worked on the Android open source project directly, but really AOSP uses a lot of other open source libraries. So all of the work that you and your teams have been doing across the ecosystem, not only on the Linux kernel, but on um, you know, databases, all of the, all, obviously all of the tool chain work and the rest, has really made it easier for us to bring up Android and get everything up and running. Um, so thank you all for doing that. And what we have right now, the pre-built compilers and build system support. So given the build system support, if you have a board today, you can start working on building your own build of the, of the Android open source platform to, um, to target your particular build. Um, we have basic libc and the shell and the rest, so you can also start to run some of the command line benchmarks if you have those available to try and see what does the performance look like of these standard benchmarks on your hardware. Um, I did mention that we don't yet have the Java runtime up. Android is really a Java system. All of the user interface is done in Java. Most of the system services, all of the communication, even native apps sit on top of some Java most of the time. Um, that has to come up. That's really important for us to get up soon in order to do more user level testing. But I am excited that you can start kicking the tires and seeing how the system performs um, with, you know, on your workloads. And optimizations are really a key place where we want to look over the next year. I promised you a little bit of a preview for uh, what's going to come next, and that's, that's where we're going. So we're going to finish off the runtime and the emulator. Um, we need to build out some more of the pre-built tools. We haven't got the Rust compiler and a couple of other things uh, uh, set up. Um, but really the biggest thing is starting to look in and, and dig in and add support for all of the modern extensions. So basically we really want to build out the platform and make sure that we have optimized implementations of the work. A lot of the projects that we're using right now, including the AOSP code itself, is sort of falling back to a C default. And we know from our previous examples, standing up on new platforms, um, we really need optimized versions of memcopy, all of the libc functions, libm, um, just sort of across the ecosystem. There's really a lot of work. So when I look at our, our codecs, the graphics stack, and everything, we really need to do all of the work to move from a prototype and something that, that runs and, and 
builds a nice product to something that's really singing, that's showing off the best in class processors that Christy was mentioning just in the previous talk. Um, there's a lot of work we really want to do on the LLVM side to make sure we know that the tool chain's in a great place and people are doing great work, but there's a lot to make sure that uh, LLDB, the debugger's stable, the profilers are stable, that all of the, uh, the linker is working well, that all of the optimizations work, that various sets of extensions work well together uh, when configured at the same time, and in some ways, most importantly, getting all of the continuous integration in place. It's important for us that RISC-V be seen as a tier one platform by the rest of the ecosystem, both on the tooling side and on the open source software side, so that we know that the projects will not just run once for one demo, but that every day these projects are working for RISC-V, they're optimized, they're running well, and they're hitting the fast path. In the standard space, um, from Android side, we have a unique set of, of requirements. Um, so we're really excited about some of the work around profiles and raising the bar and making more things available. But we have some very interesting and unique needs uh, in, in our stack. Um, for example, some of the, on the numeric side, some of our font shaping code has really sp specific requirements around half width floats. Um, we have requirements on the security side in order to do some memory tagging extensions. We have uh, the Android runtime has a just-in-time compiler, so some of the work that's coming out of the J extension working group in order to make that work well is really important for us. Um, we have some, the intersection between the C and the Java memory model leads into some interesting edge cases around atomics that we really are trying to get more engaged in and, and really help nail down. And it's really important to us that we get sort of all of this right. Because I think, like Christy mentioned, even more so on the Android side, one of the things that we've found is once the first device ships at volume, that's sort of the baseline native API that all developers will target. And so it becomes very hard to get developers to target new extensions over time. And so if you want to, as in the past when we added uh, integer divide or when we added uh, SIMD instructions to Android, getting developers to move to those can take many, many years. And so um, we want to really get engaged over the next year to make sure that we've got this full set of extensions that we think is going to let everything not only run really fast and really efficiently, um, but also be a stable ABI that we know we can continue to evolve as we go forward, and we do add more extensions and more usage in the Android platform. The security side is sort of the last big part where we really want to, to dive in. We've invested a lot in sanitizers in order to make sure that all of our native code is running well, um, that we're free, as free as possible from memory safety issues. Um, but also there's, there's an ever, ever ratcheting bar on the hardware features that are required, uh, whether it's trusted execution environments, confidential compute, virtualization, or even runtime detection of memory safety errors in the hardware. So um, those are all areas where I think we're going to invest a lot next year, and we're looking forward to working with uh, a lot of folks in the industry on it. So like I mentioned, AOSP is now available and ready for people to start looking at on their boards, and we would definitely like to invite people who have reference boards. We're making a new program available that will allow you as a reference board provider to port Android to your reference board, build a base software package, upload it, and have it, have it hosted in our servers and linked directly from our sites where we would point to you as manufacturers for your boards. Um, now, you would have to, you know, the two things we would ask are that, number one, I did mention earlier that we update Android every year. So we do ask people to try and uh, update their base software package, their board support package every year so that it's um, not out of date. And we also ask that you keep your, your uh, vendor images and firmware available because um, we don't like to host b private binary blobs on, on the Android open source website itself. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time. I know that there have been many requests for us to come out and talk about Android. I'm really happy to invite all of you to participate in uh, the Android open source project. And I look forward to seeing you not only there, um, but also in all of the other open source projects that we share a dependency on, as well as here in, in RISC-V International. Thank you. <laughs>